Good morning, everybody. Hello. It looks like I might be stuck in Kazakhstan today, even though it is about Liberia. I cannot seem to get it to uh, upload a different background. Um, so I might have to talk about Liberia from Kazakhstan. Slightly strange, I know. Uh, but there you go. <laughs> I hope everyone's OK. Good morning, if you're just coming in. Good morning, Noah. Lovely to see you again. Hello. Oh, we just lost someone. Oh, no. Good morning, Rebecca. Hello, Isabel. Hello, Sophie. Good morning. Uh, I was just saying, I seem to be stuck in Kazakhstan. I can't seem to change my background this morning. So we're going to have to talk about Liberia from Asia. Yeah. Mm. Just one of those things, I guess. Uh. Oh, it's the Q. Oh, the Q&A thing is like a different way of asking questions. But to be honest, the chat is easier. Um, yeah, I didn't think it was on for this one. But there you go. You can try it out if you like. Good morning, Lily. Hello. Uh, right, I'll share up the screen. I might uh, delay just for a minute because I know that there are more people coming. So I'll hold up for a second, but I can show you where we're going today. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Where is Liberia? There's a good question. Yeah, so we're at L in our alphabet of countries. Oh, happy birthday, Noah. Hey, that's really cool. Congratulations. Uh, I'm very good, Susanna. Thank you. Yes. Um, so Liberia here is in Africa. So our yellow part of our map. If we zoom in, you can see it's a relatively small country. Here it is uh, in the west of Africa. Yes, it's quite little, um, but it's got loads of cool, interesting stuff about it, of course. Um, so today we're going to do our traditional, we're going to have a look at the physical geography. We're going to have a look at the government, the culture, the wildlife, and of course, everyone's favourite bit, the GDP per capita. In fact, I've gone slightly crazy this morning and uh, we're going to have... Um, <laughs> an additional crazy graph oh yes there you go something to look forward to eh? um uh, let me see uh good morning if you've just arrived hello so um yeah liberia an african country um which we haven't had too many african countries yet we've had ethiopia and i think that might be the only one so i think this is our second trip to africa um and here's the liberian flag which might remind you, oh, hang on, it's disappeared. There it is. Um, it might remind you of another world flag. I don't know. You might, if you have an idea, you can put it in the chat. But there is a reason that this looks very similar to another flag that we might be familiar with. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <Hang> on. <laughs> another graph, Sharon. Yes. And it does. Yeah, that's it. It looks a lot like the USA's flag. That's it. And when we get to the culture section, we'll see why that is. Um, that's not an accident or a coincidence. It's supposed to look like the American flag, the flag of the USA. Yes. All right. So let's uh, let's start with our physical geography here. Let's look at the map. Um, like I say, it's a relatively small country, um, especially considering uh, compared to some other African countries. Some African countries are absolutely huge. Liberia is a modest size. Um, and we can see here, Monrovia is the capital there on the coast. And if we look at the names of some of these places, we can see that American connection again. So we've got traditional African names like Bong Town and Totota, uh, Totota, I think, <laughs> oh, there you go. Um, and Zwedru, places like that. But we've also got places that sound a lot more American. We've got Greenville, Harper. We've got Buchanan. We've got, uh, uh, where are we? Uh, where's the, uh, Robertsport, uh, the port of Robert. And Tubmanburg, 
um, named after one of the presidents of Liberia, um, who was quite important in the past. So we can see just with the with the uh, the uh, mix of place names that we've got somewhere in Africa, which is quite American. Hmm, bizarrely. Um, now it has some neighbours. It's got Sierra Leone, which is a similar kind of country. Um, when we look at the history of the thing, um, we've got Guinea, and then we've got the Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, next door as well. And uh, most of the western southern border of Liberia is there with the Atlantic Ocean. So the same ocean that uh, laps up on the shores of the UK, of course, just a lot further south. Hmm. Ah, Sharon's asking, did the Americans colonize Liberia? Something like that, yes, in a very different way than other African countries were, con uh, con were conquered, uh, colonized. Uh, the Ivory Coast, for example, was colonized by the French, hence the French sounding name. Uh, Sierra Leone was colonized by the British. So, although that doesn't sound massively uh, um, <laughs> uh, English, but yeah, there's a reason for that too. And Liberia was, it was colonized sort of by Americans, but in a very special way. So yes, uh, you know, I'll leave you hanging on that one. Now, when it comes to the physical geography of the highs and the lows, the relief, here's our relief map. And well, you can probably notice if you've seen one of these before, these relief maps, uh, the greener a section, the closer to the sea level is, so the flatter it is, the lower the land, and the more yellow into brown it gets, the higher it is. And this country, Liberia, it doesn't get very high. It's, as most parts of the world are, it's very low down next to the sea, as you can imagine, you know, the beach leading to the sea. Um, and then we get the odd little hill poking up, and towards the north of the country, we get into a more hilly area, but there aren't really any mountains. The highest mountain um, here is Mount Wutive, which is, well, 1,380 meters high, which isn't that high. Ah, Declan, good question. Was Guinea colonized by guinea pigs? I don't think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that. And Lily, yes, sorry, I missed your comment there. But yes, the USA flag does have more stars, doesn't it? And the American flag, the USA flag, at the moment has 50 stars because there are 50 states. Um, Liberia doesn't have states. So maybe that's why it's only got one star. It just is, you know, its own country. It does have 13 counties, um, some of which have African names and some of them have American names like Maryland. Um, but yeah, it, I, I imagine if we're going by saints, uh, states, <laughs> I was reading a comment then, if we go by states, then we are also going to uh, only have the one star because there's only one state. It is Liberia. Yeah. Um, a good question here or a good point out here from Rebecca. Why were all the rivers named after saints? A lot of them are. Yes. So the people who came and colonized Liberia, who created Liberia, were mainly Christians. The vast majority of them were Christians. And today, over 80% of the people that live in Liberia are Christians, uh, with another 12%, something like that, of Muslims, uh, leaving a, a small amount of people to still practice the very traditional African religions. Some of that we'll look at in the culture section. So when the people from America came to Liberia, they named a lot of the rivers after saints. So we've got St. Paul and St. John here. There's also lots of other saint rivers, but are much smaller that don't show up on this map too. But some of our rivers, rivers, uh, I can't speak this morning. Da, 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 da. Some of our rivers, um, they have very African names like the Dube and the Keslos uh, and the Mano. So some of them kept their old names. Some of them were given new names. And well, there you go, a bit of a mix, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we're seeing already a country, just by looking at the map, we can tell that there's a mix between American and African culture, which is going to make it kind of an interesting place to be, isn't it? Now, the specific thing that I wanted to focus on uh, when it comes to physical geography is this strip along here, the coastline, because uh, Liberia doesn't have many big sandy beaches. It isn't that kind of thing because we're fairly close to the equator, um, we get a lot of rainforest or rainforest-like forests um, in the further north of the country. But along the 
the shore along the coast we get a very special um, type of forest which is quite rare it only covers about one percent of the earth um, but it is incredibly valuable ecosystem so we'll have a look at that um, ah yeah lily asks if i lived in liberia would i be liberian you would yes um, Michael Jackson used to sing a song called Liberian Girl, which I always thought he was singing Librarian Girl. He wasn't. He was talking about a girl from Liberia, not a girl who worked in a library. Hmm. There you go. Yes, yeah, so Liberian. Yeah, good one, Lily. Um, so this special ecosystem that we see, we don't see in many other places on Earth. Um, other African countries have this, and you do see them over in the Americas and Asia too. Oh, no, ask a question. What is the equator? So the equator for this, we'll have to go back to our, um, we'll go back to our original map. Hang on. So the equator is a line that goes through the center of the earth. Okay. Um, um, I haven't got it marked on my map, but I can show you where it is. Here we go. So the equator goes through the center of the earth roughly if i can try and get this right it's roughly like oh hang on i better actually have a pen that i can see roughly like that it's a straight line not my wobbly line mind you um and so that's the center of the earth that's where it's hottest and wettest and that's where we find our rainforests so the congo rainforest the Indonesian rainforest and of course the Amazon rainforest all along the equator. So we can see that Liberia is a bit north of that, but it's close enough to still get a bit of rainforest vibe going on. So it's going to be very warm. The further we come either north or south from the equator, the colder it gets. So of course the furthest point away is the North Pole and the South Pole. Those are equidistant from the equator. Yeah. Um, so we already know that from this that Liberia must be a very hot country because it's close to that equator. OK, um, good question. Uh, now, Declan, yes, we're, we're, we're going to the mangroves and Noah too. That's right. Yes, the mangrove swamps and forests is what's so imp impressive about Liberia. Now, these are really, really unique forests. They're unique because most plants on Earth and I'm afraid there's no sloths, no sloths in, in Africa, I'm afraid. They're over in South America. Um, but most, <laughs> most uh, forests in the world, if I were to pour salt water on their roots, most plants would just die. Yeah, the salt would kill them. Um, it's not the uh, same for people, you know, and animals, if, or most animals. If we drink salt water, we die. It's, it dehydrates us. It doesn't hydrate us. The salts leave no room for the water and we end up, you know, dying of thirst, even though we're full of liquid. It's a weird kind of thing that we do. But mangrove forests are special because the trees and plants there have learnt to survive in salt water. So that makes them pretty special, really. Um, mangrove trees, at least big mangrove trees, can be seen with these great big root systems that don't go under the ground. If you think of like a, a common tree in the UK, like an oak tree or a, a pine tree or something, um, you don't really see the roots that much. You, know, you see one trunk, it goes into the ground and then the roots spread out under the ground. In the case of um, uh, our mangroves, you do see all of the roots um, or at least a lot of the roots. They're up above, um, in this case, the water, because as I'm assuming some of us know already, the sea doesn't stay still. It has tides. So at some points it's higher and some points of the day it's lower. So the trees need to be able to survive with all those waves coming in and out, the tide coming in and out, and they've got to be able to drink salt water, which is something, like I say, that most plants cannot do. Um, if you went into your garden and started spraying salt water around, you would kill your garden pretty quick and your parents would probably be pretty mad with you. Mm -hmm. um, so don't do that. Oh, uh, 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 the word mangrove. Here we go. Yes, I'm asking you how to spell it. Yes, yeah, so mangrove up here. Um, and this is a diagram that I found which shows us how the mangrove is so good at surviving in this place. So it comes down to having lots and lots of roots. So we can see the big roots that we can see with our eyes. And then under the under this, well, seabed, I suppose, under the, 
the uh, sandy covering, there are lots of little roots that grow up through that. Again, that's not something we really see in you know traditional plants in a deciduous forest. Um, usually our roots go down, they don't pop up. But these ones, they come up above the water so that the tree can breathe. <sighs> of course, if you're underwater, your roots might well be at, at risk of being uh, waterlogged and swamped and you know it's not good you need to have access to some air so those breathing roots they help um, the tree keep oxygenated then the roots themselves have a special filter inside of them or at least most of them do not all of them do um, but that filter will bring in salt water and as it sucks up the salt water to get a nice drink it will block the salt so it will send the salt back out and just keep the nice, clean, uh, fresh water to go up into its branches. Now, the best tree in the world cannot block out all the salt, so it needs to do something with it. If some salt gets in, which it will do, the tree needs to be able to get rid of that. So their leaves are very special too. They can for want of a better word, they can sweat out salt, a bit like us humans do. Um, we have salt in our bodies, and when we sweat, a lot of that salt comes out. That's what the leaves do. So any salt that gets in there, past the filter system, gets poked back out through the leaves. Um, now, if a, if a particular leaf has too much salt in it, then the tree will just drop that leaf so the salt can't hurt it. So we can see this here. Salt may accumulate in older leaves, uh, before they fall off. Yeah, get rid of it. We'll, we'll jettison that leaf if it's too salty and then we've got rid of the salt. So the trees, they're constantly regulating the amount of salt that they're taking in and they're regulating the amount of salt that they're holding on to. Very, very clever plants. Now, these plants are incredibly important, these trees, because they do a lot of things for Liberia and whatever other country we have mangrove in. Um, they store a lot of carbon. A mangrove forest will store more carbon than a rainforest or a tiger forest or a deciduous forest, um, more than any other forest on earth in fact, which means that the mangroves are really important for combating global warming. If we have loads of mangroves, they will hold in carbon. They also hold on to the soil, the land. Um, if you go to a beach in the UK or a nice tropical sandy beach or whatever, those beaches are constantly moving and changing because the waves come up and they grab the sand and they take it away. And over time, that means that beaches can get smaller as they get eaten away by the sea. In mangrove forests, we don't get that because the sea comes along, tries to steal the soil and the sand, and it can't because the trees are grabbing onto it with their roots. So it means that the coastline stays nice and secure, that land stays safe. So they're protecting the land, which is very cool. Also, because these are in the sea, you can just imagine, I'll show you a picture in a minute when we get to the wildlife, you can just imagine the amount of creatures, fish and other watery creatures that can live around the plants, hiding in the roots, um, uh, hanging out uh, and swimming through like these well underwater forests as much as they are above ground so they're really important places um i i, I do apologize though declan that there are no sloths that live there i don't know what would happen if you put us put a sloth in a mangrove i don't think it would like it i don't think it would like the salt no It'd be too slow to get away from the rising tide wouldn't it <laughs> All right. So, yeah, mangroves, very important, not just for Liberia, but also for the planet and all the creatures that live in them. Hmm. Um, so I mentioned wildlife, didn't I? Let's see if we can find some creatures here. Um, now, the national animal of Liberia is a very proud and noble beast. Um, ah, sharks. Yes, Noah. Um, yeah, th th I, I'm not sure what species of shark live off the coast of Liberia, but I have seen um, pictures and video of sharks weaving their way through the root systems. So there you go. Yeah. Uh, isn't that a shoot? Um, oh, I don't know what you mean, Lee. Uh, a root and a shoot. I suppose they're similar. Yes. Uh, here we go. There. So the national animal 
of Liberia is the mighty Asiatic lion. Rawr. Um, unfortunately, there aren't that many lions left in Liberia, um, but traditionally there were a lot there and there are still some wild. There's not so many as there used to be. Um, oh, I see, yes, and Lily says that a shoot is a root that grows up. I suppose so, yes. Although these are upward going roots rather than shoots. But yeah, I, I don't know how, how that would fit in with the language. Yeah. Um, so yeah, our lion here is the symbol of the country. And a lot of countries have lions as their symbols, of course, including England. Um, and as lion is usually there to represent power, strength, courage, fortitude, um, cool hair, maybe? I don't know. Um, so, but it's fitting, isn't it? Uh, England has a lion as a national animal and there are no lions here. So it makes more sense that Liberia has it, I guess. Yeah. Having said that, Scotland has a unicorn. And the last I checked, there were no unicorns in Scotland either. And don't get me started on the Welsh dragon. Whew. But there you go. So, yes, we've got the lion is the national animal, the one that the Iberians associate with themselves. But there's also a whole load of other very cool creatures. Here we've got. <laughs> oh, cool. Uh, thank you, Bilang. Bilang says Singapore has a lion and a merlion. A merlion? That's amazing. I have, I'd love to see a merlion. Is that like a mermaid, but a lion? It sounds, that's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have to look up pictures of the merlion now after this lesson, aren't I? <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, so <laughs> um, here we've got some creatures here. We've got a chimpanzee. Yeah, lots of uh, different apes live in Liberia. The chimpanzee is probably one of my favourites. Uh, they're incredibly clever creatures that live in, you know, very complex uh, groups, um, societal groups. Um, they have very complicated relationships between their families and their tribes, and I do like them. So yeah, there's our chimpanzee. Ah, ah Bilang says it is half mermaid, half lion. That's very cool. Now this creature here that Lily is asking if it's a baby hippo. This is a young hippo, but they don't get much bigger than this because this is a pygmy hippo. Da, 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 da. Uh, pygmy is the name that we give to lots of species if they are small versions. Um, so you do get pygmy elephants in the Congo. Uh, you get pygmy goats and pygmy hamsters and all this kind of stuff. But this is a pygmy hippo. Very, very cute. I like its rubbery, flubbery tummy. I do indeed. Um, and I like the way it looks kind of shiny too. It's obviously been in the water having a nice bath and they secrete a lot of oil out of their uh, bodies to protect themselves from the sun. It's like natural sun uh, tan lotion that they have. So yeah, this little guy is a pygmy hippo. We then have African elephants, not as many as they used to be, but they do still exist in Liberia. And then you've got leopards as well here. Now, the downside of these animals, the bit that uh, is a bit uh, upsetting maybe, is that 80% of people in Liberia um, eat bush meat, which means they eat all these animals, even though it's illegal, and it's illegal certainly to take these animals and sell them anywhere else as well, people will eat all of these things. Um, they're not supposed to, but they do. 80% of people eat bush meat. So a lot of these animals in Liberia are under threat. You know, this cute little pygmy hippo, I'm looking at it and going, ah, oh, what a cute animal. And I can see people in the chat going, ah, oh, what a cute animal. Some Liberians, most Liberians would look at that and say, hmm, what a tasty looking animal. Hmm. So, um, yeah, it's, it's something which a lot of different organizations are trying to deal with. They're trying to stop uh, people going out and killing these animals to eat them. But it's part of the culture. And there's also, when we come and look at the economics, um, we will see why people eat so much bushmeat. We'll come back to that in a minute. Um, for a lot of Liberians, it's not something they're particularly proud of, but it is something that they do quite regularly. So there you go. Um, and yes, the government officially says it's illegal, but it's very difficult to stop people going out and hunting these animals. Um, you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky for sure. So um, just to give you another little look, 
here we are here we've got a whole school of fish a school of fish i couldn't find out what type of fish this is particularly but i do like this photo it shows us the sea there rising really high nearly up to the top of those big root systems so the tide must be in in this photo and you've got all these fish darting around these amazing roots that look a bit like twiglets, don't they? Hmm. Um, <laughs> Rebecca says she wouldn't eat an animal with oily skin. Um, maybe not. Maybe not. I, maybe the inside doesn't have oily bits. I don't know. I've never eaten a hippo and I'm pretty sure I never will, uh, I think. Um, there was a time uh, whew, in the early 20th century when people did in the USA, they tried to start farming hippos. They brought lots over from Africa um, and they, they, they had a big um, advertising campaign trying to persuade people to eat hippopotamus meat. They said it'd be like the best meat, um, <laughs> better than beef, they said. But for some reason, it never really caught on. The Americans decided they didn't want to eat hippo. And so all those hippo farms shut down. Um, but they did have a go. <laughs> they had a go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it's, you know people were happy to eat beef they weren't so happy to eat hippo although according to the people who were trying to sell it it does taste pretty good i just i can't imagine myself ever trying it that's all <laughs> maybe if i get the chance i'd have a i'd have a piece but mm, i'm not going to go out there looking for hippo meat to eat i don't think and i'm certainly not going to start a hippo farm anytime soon uh, especially not with cute little pygmy hippos hmm, they're too cute for that too cute um so yes here we've got um uh, an idea of the amazing animals that live in the sea as well as on the land now of course liberia also has loads of impressive birds and insects and things like that so it is a very lively place um the mangroves are supposed to be one of and i i feel like i say this about like every um area but it's according to uh uh sources on this it is one of the most biodiverse places on the earth which means that it has just loads of different types of creature all the different insects fish mammals amphibians reptiles you name it living in and around the mangrove forest you will find all of these things now sadly again a bit of a downside here try and not make this too depressing but the mangrove is being chopped down in liberia pretty quick um at one point um, an ex-president uh, of Liberia signed papers to say that they could cut down 58% of all of the forest in Liberia. He sold it all to be chopped down. Thankfully, countries stepped in and stopped him doing that. You know, other countries said, whoa, 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 hang on. You can't just chop down nearly 60% of all your forests um, because that would, you know, damage everyone. Yeah, it's going to kill your country for a start. Um, and it's going to, going to leave you in a lot of problems. And one country in particular has made a really good um, deal with Liberia uh, to try and stop them chopping down any trees. So currently, um, the country of Norway paid millions of dollars to the Liberian government just in return for them not chopping down their trees anymore. So because, of course, most people who were chopping the trees down were doing it because they felt they had to because they had no money so the nigeria the, the norwegian government norway that country you know up in scandinavia big cold country um just gave them a load of money said okay look we'll give you loads of money you don't need to chop down the trees now and yeah seems to seems to be working so far the downside is that because liberia is a very poor country most people if they want to a fire or they want to cook things they've got to use wood yeah, they don't have like fancy uh, central heating or electricity. So there is still some deforestation that goes on. They go and chop down the trees, but it's really because they need to. Um, but thankfully, thanks to the Norwegian government, there is a the big companies aren't chopping down the trees and with, they certainly aren't going to chop down 58 percent of it, which is good. Um, so a bit of, you know, some cool wildlife there, but it is under threat, you know, um, the forests need to be protected, as do the mangroves in general, and the animals that live there. So cutting down on things like bush meat um, are going to be really important going forwards. Okay, now let's have a look at how this country is run. Um, 
Ah, what kind of trees are there in mangrove forests? That's a good question. Now, they do have different names, and there's loads of different species, but generally we just call them mangrove trees, yeah, which keeps it simple. But the, the each, you know, there are loads of variety of mangrove trees with different uh, Latin names and stuff. So I don't know what the, the most common one is in Liberia, but usually we just call them mangroves. Yeah, mangrove trees in a mangrove forest. There you are. Yeah. Um, so this is the current president of Liberia, a guy called George, I think it's Wa, but it could be Wei, and I'm not sure how he pronounced his second name. Um, he's been the president since 2018, um, and Liberia has a system that's almost identical to the USA. Again, you know, we're going back to those American roots. The country was founded by Americans, and so it's going to have that American system. So at the top, you've got the president, you know, just like President Trump. And then below, you've got the, the different houses which help him to make his decisions. But it's not one of those countries like Kazakhstan, where you have a president and a prime minister. There is just the president, the guy in charge. Um, Liberia is kind of cool because it's the first country in Africa ever to have a female leader. Um, she's not in charge anymore, but she was a few years ago. Um, so they, they had a female president before, I mean, the USA has never had a female president. So that's quite uh, positive, yeah. Um, but at the moment it's George Wah, but I, I don't know if any of you have heard of him before. Maybe not. I mean, Liberia's a kind of out of the way country that you probably might not know much about already but this guy if you were into your football you might recognize him I don't know if we've got any crazy football fans out there um I personally I don't know much about football but this is the president of Liberia a fair few years ago because he was a world-class top-rated uh, football player he was a striker he played for AC Milan he pay, played for um, Paris Saint-Germain some you know some big teams and he made quite a name for himself he he was one of the best football players in the world at, during his time when he was a bit younger um, which helped him out because of course that made him famous and because he was famous that I suppose helped people to vote him into into office. Ah, now there's a good question, what language do they speak in Liberia? And that kind of fits with this. So the president, George Wei, Wa, um, he speaks English, he speaks French fluently, um, and I think he might have a little spattering of other, other languages too, he might have a bit of Spanish or Italian in there too, but most people speak either English or traditional languages or French, because of course it's right next to French speaking countries as well. Um, but I think the official language is English. Um, that's what the Americans who first settled it would have spoken. Um, ah, ah, oh, Singapore has a female president. That's cool, uh, Bileng, that's very cool, yes. Yeah, I don't know if, um, I mean, I know Singapore isn't in uh, Africa, and I don't know if there are any current female leaders in Africa, um, but she was definitely the first African female leader, not the first in the world, but yeah, there you go. Um, so yeah, this guy, he went from famous footballer, top of his game, to being in charge of an entire country, which is quite cool. Um, yeah, he, he spent time uh, in schools and universities and in football teams in France, in Italy, in Spain, and in England. So he's very well traveled. He knows the world. Um, he can speak multiple languages. And that means that even though he got all that sort of skill, I suppose, from playing sports, that does put him in pretty good stead for being the leader of a country, I guess. Um, oh, this is cool. Thank you, Thomas and Isaac. Uh, George Way was the first African player to win the award for best player in the world. There you go. Whew, that's quite a, an achievement, isn't it? The Ballon d'Or. Okay, I mean, you might have noticed I have no idea about football. Yeah, but apparently he's a big deal, or was. Um, now he's too busy presidenting to play football, I guess. Um, uh, now, the question here about religion. Yeah, so in Liberia, most people are Christians, about 80 odd percent, 12 percent are Muslim. And then we've got others. What's left are traditional African religions, um, some of which we'll look when we get to the culture in a minute. Yeah, so mainly Christian, which, again, that connects to the American thing in America. They are mainly Christian. So the people who came to found this country would also be Christian, too. That makes sense, doesn't it? Hmm. 
All right. So now for the time moment that we've all been waiting for the GDP per capita. Oh, yes. OK, so I'm going to here, here we have the uh, the rankings so far from all the countries we've done. And those of you eagle eyed will notice Liberia is firmly at the bottom. Oh, dear. Um, Denmark still riding high at the top with Australia just behind and the United Kingdom behind them. So in the UK, we've got an average GDP per capita of about $42,000 per person per year. Um, and I suppose I should explain this, shouldn't I? The GDP per capita, for those who don't know already, is where we take all the money that's made in a country, we put it in a great big pot, and then we imagine that we divide it up amongst all the people in the country. So if there's 10 million people in your country, it gets divided into 10 million. Liberia has a population of about 5 million, um, so it's quite small. Um, to give you some idea, United Kingdom has a population of about 69 million. So it's definitely quite a, quite a small population, but they don't have much money. If we divided all the money in the country up between those 5 million odd people, we come to a total of $621 each per year. That's like less than, a, than an average English person would get in a month, in a week almost. It's not good. It's an incredibly poor country. And that kind of helps us now understand why are people eating? Um, does it include kids? No, I think they try and they, they focus it on the... Uh, it depends who's working it out, but I think the ones that I'm using are just on the adult population. Good question, Rebecca. Yes. So this explains why they eat bushmeat. Why are they eating chimps and elephants and hippos? It might not be because, you know, they just hate the animals. It could be that they don't have anything better to eat. Yeah. So, yes, it's a developing country. That's yeah, that's what we call it. Um, so, yeah, if we divide our countries up, Ethiopia, Haiti and Liberia developing um, that means that they are uh, poor countries which you know don't have very sophisticated uh, methods of making money they don't have the big factories and things like that um, then we've got China to India here these are emerging so they are countries that were not long ago um, developing but are now doing better they're getting there and then we've got these countries here which are developed and they are, you know, the countries that we think of as being rich and powerful with roads and hospitals and schools and all that kind of stuff. Um, where sadly, Liberia doesn't fit in that category. It's even below Haiti, which was our previous, you know, low rider. Um, in Liberia, only about 60% of people can read or write, which tells us that a lot of people are not going to school because they don't have access to schools because they cost money. Um, people are eating bush meat because they, you know, there's not loads of supermarkets full of food. And if there is, they can't afford it anyway. Um, we've got people chopping down the forests because they need money. In fact, you know, the country is so poor that the capital city, Morovia, um, all of its rubbish, you know, the, the rubbish collectors that go around, they didn't have them for a long time. So it's a bit stinky for sure. Um, but now uh, the other countries of the world, the World Bank, pays every year to have the the streets uh, swept and the, the bins taken away so they don't even pay for that themselves because they're, they're they're that poor so other countries step in to help them out like with norway giving them money not to chop down the forests um so it's all it's all starting to make sense yeah um it's not that Li liberian people are just like out there chewing on monkeys because you know they think it's fun um it's happening because it's a very very poor country and a lot of the reason for that is war. Um, if you have heard of Liberia before, it was probably to do with a war. Um, it's not a war at the moment, but in the 1990s and well, and the early 2000s as well, um, it went through some very long and difficult civil wars, people fighting against each other um, to see who could rule the country. It was not a peaceful place. About 8% of the population were killed um, in these wars. Uh, many others left. They just ran away to live in different countries. Um, so it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a difficult place, or it was a very difficult place to live in. Um, ah, 
hey, that's cool. Thomas Nyzak, they've done a little bit of research here. One of uh, George Way's first decisions was to reduce his own pay by 25% and give it to the rest of the country. So there you go. See, he's trying to help out with the poverty. Um, yes, I know he's done lots of, and even before he became the president, he set up a lot of charities linking football and poverty to try and help people, you know, learn to play football to get, you know, uh, to get more money and things like that. So, yeah. Um, so the war made a big difference. And now for something special, a graph that's more graphier than any other graph you may have seen before. A graph that is layered and complex, colorful. It's the favorite graph, uh, well, at least my favorite graph of today. Um, ah, thank you, Sharon's uh, found out that Iceland was the first country to have a female president. That's cool. Hmm, that is good. All right, so here we go. Here's our super graph. Just gaze in awe at the colors, the spikes, the ups, the downs, the wiggly bits. Ah, oh. now this graph is showing us um, our GDP per capita across time. Normally what we do in our previous graph, we just look at it, what it's like today. But hmm, this shows what's been going on since about 1960 up to today. Um, and so it shows us each country, how they're going, so how they're moving around, okay? Now, most of this graph is a bit of a mess. It's just this blob, isn't it, here? Yeah? Because this is telling us there's not much change. Uh, the United Kingdom, you can just about make it out, this uh, pale blue shape uh, line here. It goes up and down a bit, it wiggles about, but it stays at basically the same level of, of wealth, yeah? That the growth in the country isn't really changing. It's not getting rich, it's not getting poor, it's just staying the same, bumbling around. And that's what most of our countries are doing. They're not all at the same level, they're not all as rich as each other, but they're not really changing. The poor countries stay poor, the rich countries stay rich, and that's it. With a few outliers. Now, our first outlier we can see here in 1960, this line here, hopefully you can see this, is China. Okay, China in 1960 was a really poor country, and then it went crazy. It just went whoop really fast, right up to the top of our graph. It grew hugely. Um, that's when Chairman Mao uh, really started getting his communist policies into, into order, and China just grew and grew and grew, and then it sort of stays at a level, sometimes growing higher, sometimes growing lower. Um, the other thing that stands out on this map, though, is Liberia. That's this blue line over here. It was doing all right. It was just bumbling along. It wasn't particularly rich, but it was doing okay. Then we get the civil war, um, or the second major civil war, and it just plummets. The growth falls down. It lost 90% of all of its money and all of its growth within the course of about a year. Now, when it was down here during the war then, people had nothing, you know, they're poor now. It's like they're rich compared to what they were doing back then. Everyone was just in complete turmoil, of course, because everyone's running around with guns shooting each other. It was a terrible, terrible time. Um, thankfully, though, we can see that after a couple of years, it bounces back again and growth comes back. But it was never quite the same again. It's still suffering from that war. If you can imagine all the things that must have been destroyed during that war to make the country poor, um, it, the growth has come back, but it's very, very slow. And whew, it means that Liberia is, you know, a poor place to live. Yeah, it's, it's not great. It hasn't got a lot of the things that other countries have, hmm. which is very sad, especially considering um, a bit of its history, which we'll look at now. Um, let me find our way down. Here we go. <laughs> yes, Declan, splat. The colourful graph definitely went splat. <laughs> Oh dear. So let's try and put this together. Why have we got all these Americans? Why have we got American place names? Why do we have a, an almost American flag? Um, well, it all comes down to uh, history, of course. So um, I've said a few times that Liberia was founded, was colonized by Americans. But not just any old Americans, they were a very special group of Americans. Um, the idea of this country being found, founded 
was partially, not only, it wasn't his idea originally, but he was the president at the time, this guy here, who you might recognize as Abraham Lincoln, kind of a, a big deal in American history. And this country was set up during the American Civil War, because the Civil War, largely in America in the 1860s, was fought between the Northern American states and the Southern American states. The Southern American states wanted to keep slaves, black African slaves, yeah, or at least slaves who originally were bought from Africa. Whereas the Northern group, they wanted to not have slaves, they wanted to free the slaves. Yeah? So they had came up with a bright idea during the Civil War. Let's take a load of people who used to be slaves, black Africans, and we'll send them back to Africa. Okay, and they can set up their own country. It'll be amazing because they'll mix in with the local people because they're African and they're African. They all look the same. What could possibly go wrong? Hmm. So it came up with, this is still the motto of the country, the love of liberty brought us here. That word liberty, it means freedom. Yeah, it's what you get when you stop being a slave. You get freed, you have liberty. And suddenly we understand why the country is called Liberia. Yeah, liberty, Liberia, freedom. The country is called freedom. So um, about 15,000 black ex-slaves and some people who weren't ex-slaves, but all black people, they move from, from the USA over to Africa. And the idea is it's all going to be fine. Unfortunately, it turns out that maybe people were a little bit naive about this. They thought, well, these people from America, they have the same skin color as the people in Africa. So certainly they'll get on fine. But of course, that's ridiculous. That's like saying that all cats get on with each other because they look kind of similar. That doesn't work, does it? Um, yeah, the American people were very different from the from the, the native people. And sadly, they did fight each other a lot. And um, the American group came out on top because they had more money and guns and things like that. But it wasn't what it what everyone wanted it to be. Everyone wanted it to be this brilliant sort of like, yay, all the people come back to where they come from. But of course, the Americans, they might have looked African, but most of them were born in America. Most of them had American family. They all spoke English. They didn't speak African languages. Um, they were all Christian. They didn't have African religion. So they didn't actually mix that well at all. The Americans who came over, the people who used to be slaves, kind of stomped all over the place and took it over and weren't particularly kind to a lot of the people that lived there originally. Um, now, this picture here, Joseph Jenkins Roberts, he's the first president. We've seen the current president. This is the first president. Oh, Declan, what year? It was, I think, 1862 um, was the founding. I don't think it became an official country until about 1864, though, just after the Civil War. If you were wondering, uh, the, North, the North Americans won that war, which is why there's no slavery in America anymore, thankfully. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's a good idea but it maybe didn't work as well as everyone thought, hoped it would. Um, interestingly, if we go back to our map, uh, which is just up here, um, this idea was taken on by Britain. And so here we have Sierra Leone, which is a country which was founded exactly the same way. Um, a thousand ex-slaves um, uh, who were owned by the British were, set, were told they could go to Sierra Leone and make that their country. So both of these countries are formed in the same way by people who used to be slaves, who were sent in Liberia's case by America and Sierra Leone's case by England to go and start their own African countries. And neither of them were massive successes. Um, although who knows, the future is bright, of course, let's be hopeful here. Um, ah, there you are, Thomas and Isaac, the, the capital of Sierra Leone is Freetown. Yes, that liberty idea again. Yes, it's all about freedom. So that's where we, we sort of start with that explains the, the American names It explains the American flag or the American ish flag. And it explains why most people there are Christians. They've all come over from the United States. Um, but let's have a look at some modern culture here. Um, sport is a big deal in Liberia. Um, uh, uh, what's no way camp? I don't know. It must just be like a, the name of a place, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that map was very bright, wasn't it? Yes, yeah, very bright indeed. I like it. Um, another thing that is bright is the uniforms of the two most important sports teams in uh, 
Liberia. Uh, the first team here is the football team. And you can imagine football is number one sport in Liberia, which is interesting considering that it's, it's got American links rather than you know British links or whatever. But football's the number one. Football's not so uh, important or uh, massive in the USA, but in Liberia it definitely is. Um, I don't know if that links to well, I suppose it does have something to do with why the president used to be a footballer. You know, football is the favourite sport, therefore footballers must be some of the most respected people, I guess. Um, so that would make sense. Um, but the second sport is a lot more American, and you can see that sports team down the bottom here. Um, what we got here we are. So you can probably make out what sport this is. A very American sport. It's basketball. There you are. So that's the second most important sports. Um, I like this picture just because this dude is a giant. I mean, you need to be big or it's good to be tall if you play basketball. Some of these guys are true whoppers. You know, they can almost reach the, the basket with their hands. My goodness, they wouldn't have, barely have to jump. Um, the football team, not quite so big, of course. Um, so those are our two main sports. Um, ah, Noah loves a bit of basketball. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, uh, it is good fun. Um, who was the first president? Sorry, I'll go back. I, I moved on a bit quickly from that, didn't I? Joseph Jenkins Roberts is the first president. Yes. Um, so for the first, I think, couple of years, the country was still ruled by America. It was like, you know, you guys go over there and do your own thing but we're in charge. And then after a couple of years, they were like, actually, you, know, you guys just look after yourselves. And yeah, there you go. But there's still a lot of links between the USA and uh, Liberia. Lots of American people go to Liberia and lots of Liberians visit America because of course the language is the same and yeah, kind of works, doesn't it? A lot of them have ancestors and family in the other place. Yeah. Hmm. So Joseph Jenkins Roberts. Uh, ah, thank you. All right. So there's our sports. Now, if we're going to look at Liberia in a more traditional African way, there is something quite, well, quite cool, I think, um, about traditional African culture in Liberia as well. Now, a lot of people in uh, Liberia, even some Christians and Muslims, so it's not just the, the, the traditional Africans, there's a lot of um, you know, people who've descended from the from the Americans, um, they're part of two of these special groups. Now, these have been described as like secret societies, but also just kind of cultural groups. Um, there are two of them. The first one is the Poro. The Poro are just men. It's an all man group. And what they do is well, a lot of mysterious stuff, including dressing up in really cool costumes and doing really cool dances. So here we can see some traditional Poro costumes. We have, I'll make them a bit bigger because they are, they are quite fun to look at, but we've got combinations of these great big colourful clothing with lots of these uh, very cool sort of almost woolly, fluffy I don't know how you'd even describe that hairy costumes with these amazing masks on top so there's a guy in here of course um getting ready to do a cool dance uh, Lily says they're dressed up as poodles I don't they are a bit poodly it's their feet isn't it yes um here we see another one here I'll make this one a bit bigger as well um so these are two poro men completely covered from head to toe you, you cannot see a scrap of skin can you um but yeah these great big fluffy feet um sack masks over their heads and all these different colored dyes and stripes and you know really kind of cool now the poro or the people in the poro group they don't always dress like this um but this is for when they have special festivals and things um they will dance like this um why are their heads covered uh, good question claire i think it's because partly because it's supposed to be a mysterious society so it's supposed to be like you know we're part of this secret group we're not going to show our own faces um but also it's it's because they're trying to represent the gods yeah so they're trying to show different aspects of the gods and dance to the gods to make them happy um so some people who do this some of the poro truly believe in the gods and all that kind of stuff whereas of course the christian members the muslim members might might just look at it more of a bit of 
a bit of fun maybe rather than um something that they truly believe in because they of course would believe in one god and jesus or, or, or muhammad or whoever so um yeah the poro are all men there is another society which you probably guessed already called the sande who are all women and there's a really cool mix now the poro and the sande they believe that the world or, or their country their land needs to be guarded it needs to be looked after so for three years the sande will be in charge of the land um everything will be focused around female energy it will be focused around doing things the, the female way um doing female dances uh, decorating with special uh, sande female signs and things uh, they'll get rid of all of the male stuff then when they've done that for three years the men will take over they will take possession of the land and they will have four years where they um, look after the, the land and, and it's not just physically going out and like making sure that the plants and animals are all right it's also making sure that the gods are happy that there's a link between the world of the gods and the spirits and the world of the people so three years for the girls four years for the boys which seems a bit unfair but it is kind of important because um the the, the special number for women in uh, this culture is three and the special number for men is four and the most important number of all is seven that's man plus woman yeah so um what we have is a whole load of uh yeah three years of female rule four years of male rule then they take a break for a bit and then they start the cycle again um so depending on when you visited liberia and you visited these traditional villages and towns and things um things would seem different depending on whether you were there during a Poro time or a Sande time, because uh, when the Poro take over, they sort of get rid of all the female stuff. And when the Sande put, come over, take over and look after the land, they get rid of all the male stuff. And yeah, it just goes from one to the other in those cycles of seven years, seven being the most holy number of these traditional African religions or this particular one. Yeah. Oh, Noah says shout out to Renan Nova. Uh, hello, <laughs> if they're here. <laughs> very good so that's liberia it's kind of an interesting country for sure it's got a very interesting history you know this idea that it was created by slaves or people who used to be slaves um as a place of freedom but sadly we haven't seen that freedom you know lead to great happiness in in some cases um it's a very poor country you know I, we thought haiti was poor liberia is even poorer um it's a country that has 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 had problems with civil war in the past so lots of violence and nastiness um but thankfully that seems to be gone now and it does seem to be on its way up under its new footballing leader um it's a country that has an amazing ecosystem with amazing animals but the poverty being poor means that it's really difficult to look after those animals and plants in the way they should be looked after. So Liberia is getting a lot of help from the rest of the world to try and do that. Um, oh, Sana asked, do they have hurricanes? Not as far as I know, although there's no reason why not. They might be a little bit far north to get true hurricanes. Um, they do have, um, I, I didn't talk about this in the physical bit, but they do have like um, a wet season and then they have a wind season where the whole country is hit by wind from the sahara which can be pretty harsh actually yeah so desert winds they strike the country for about half the year um but i think and I'll, ha I'll have to research this properly but i think liberia is a bit too far north to be affected by hurricanes they happen more um around the pacific and a bit closer to the equator yeah so i think they're all right but, but i'm not sure saharan winds though is definitely what they get no earthquakes no volcanoes uh, good question again um because they're not on tectonic plate boundaries so um most of africa the vast majority of africa is not affected by earthquakes and volcanoes except for like the very northern tip where, where you'll get them um because that's where the plates join between uh, the different plates the eurasian and the uh uh african plates yeah so you you do you, in liberia nothing like that nice and stable and steady for sure 
Mm, good questions. All right. So we'll leave it there for today. Thank you very much, everyone. I hope that uh, that's piqued your interest in Liberia. And uh, I'll see you hopefully next Monday when we're going to go to the Sahara. We're going to start our course on the kingdoms of the Sahara. And that is going to be a lot of fun, I'm sure. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Bye. Ooh. <laughs>